A neurologist is a physician, and that means a doctor, not a surgeon, who cares for disease of the nervous system. And that's fairly extensive. So it includes things from the brain, to the spinal cord, to the nerves that exit the spinal cord and run down the arms, and it even includes the muscles as well. So it covers a whole host of diseases, from headache, epilepsy, multiple sclerosis, stroke, dementia, but even common things like carpal tunnel where you get a trapped nerve in your hand or a trapped nerve in your neck or your back would all come under the care of a neurologist. For doctors, headache really means any form of discomfort in the head and within the group of headaches, migraine is a uh, cause for a headache. But migraine has specific features it tends to be unilateral, throbbing, severe, made worse by movement and also by light. And if you have any of those features, you basically have a migraine. I've seen people really change, turn around their headache problems just by lifestyle. So things like eating regularly, sleeping regularly, regular exercise, all the usual doctor advice. But also funny things like caffeine, citrus fruits, all of those can cause migraine. So therefore looking at your habits, you can really change things and avoid headaches. Strokes are relatively uncommon in the young population, but as you get older, it does increase. Fortunately, with reduction in smoking, we're seeing less uh, stroke disease, I think, but it's still fairly common in the elderly population. The most important thing to realize about stroke now is that thrombolysis is available. And as you've seen on the TV, if you're having symptoms of a stroke you really are best to dial 999 because these treatments really can transform the outcome of the stroke. The next thing is the risk factors of stroke to avoid that and that's things like smoking, raised cholesterol and such like. But then also important is the aftercare and that's something Booper Cromwell is very uh, expert at is about people who have a neurological deficit about giving them physiotherapy and occupational therapy to help them recover from that and that's an important aspect of the treatment. Multiple sclerosis is a fascinating disease and actually it's one of my subspeciality interests. Despite knowing about it for 200 years, we still don't understand what causes it. It affects about one in a thousand people and yes, I'm afraid anybody can be susceptible to it and it's probably on the increase and the interesting question of why that is, some of the theories about vitamin D, one of my interests is about diet and how diet could affect your risk. Again, it's probably not much one can do to avoid it, but lifestyle probably helps. They think that smoking is a risk factor, glandular fever, so you shouldn't kiss people when you're very young. Uh, those sort of things can avoid it, perhaps. But then the key thing now is we do have treatments. Even though we don't understand how it works, we have very effective treatments. And at Booper Cromwell Hospital, we do give some of the most advanced treatments available for MS. And the thing we emphasize is to pick it up early and make the diagnosis early. And if you can intervene early, then potentially you can prevent the accumulation of disability that can come in over the years. Neurologists have a reputation of being pretty dull and boring. And, and I'm afraid our advice is a bit dull and boring in that it's really the same as you hear everywhere. It's really about a balanced lifestyle, maintaining a healthy diet, a right balance of foods and vitamins, and also regular exercise is important, I think, particularly in stress-related symptoms such as headache and sensory disturbance and such like. And I think vitamin D is the new big thing that everybody uh, feels could affects the immune system, affects a lot of diseases. I think a good 15 minutes of sunlight if you can get that, if not taking vitamin D supplements. But it's basically good general healthy living.